Hello friends, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we'll learn about COBOL file handling. So this is the agenda. We'll learn about file organization, then file access modes, then file handling verbs. So file organization indicates how the records are organized in a file. So we have three type of file organizations. One is sequential file organization. Another one is index sequential file organization. And the third one is relative file organization. So a sequential file consists of records that are stored and accessed in sequential order. So this organization can be for both VCM files as well as for the PS files. Now next is index sequential file organization. An index sequential file consists of records that can be accessed sequentially. We will be covering this under VCM videos as well. So then the last one is relative file organization. A relative file consists of records ordered by their relative address. Again, we will be cover this part in VCM videos. The thing is, these two files, they are these two organizations, they can be performed only on VCM files. This sequential file organization, this is for our PS files. So now next is file access mode. So for different organizations, we can have different file access modes. So for each scheme, different access modes can be used. So we have three type of access modes. One is sequential access, then another one is random access, then we have dynamic access. Sequential access records are accessed in the same order in which they are inserted. So this is applicable only for PS file. In PS file you cannot uh, select the records uh, randomly or you cannot take, you, can, uh, you cannot put a query and you cannot get a record from in between. Also you cannot insert the records in between. So the next is random access, so we will be covering this under VSAM. In this we are able to access the records in, in a random fashion, like if you want to fetch a record based on the key, then we can use random access. Now the last is dynamic access, so again this will be covering in VSAM video. So in dynamic access we have both sequential access as well as we have the random access. So like it has the facility, you can access it sequentially or else you can access it uh, like in a random way. Now these are the file handling verbs for op before using a file you must perform certain operations like first you need to open the file then you need to read the file if you want to read it and you want to display this then if you want to write the file you can use open first open the file then directly write it if you want to update any record that is for rewrite then you can delete any record then this uh, also you can use start uh, to start browsing then you can close the file. So now let's see all these functions practically. We will start with the basic terms. In COBOL, we can use a physical sequential file that is a PS file or a VSAM file. In this video, we'll be covering only physical sequential files. For VSAM, we'll be creating another set of videos. So what is the record? Record is a collection of fields that is used to describe an entity. One or more, more fields together form a record. For example, in student mark file, student ID, name, marks form a single record. And the cumulative size of all the fields in a record is known as record size. Now we have physical record and we have one logical record. Physical record is the information that exists on the external device. It is also known as block. Whereas logical record is the information that is used by the program. In COBOL programs only one record can be handled at a point of time and it is called logical record. Now files is a collection of related records. For example the students mark file consists of records of all the students. We will start with a simple program and then we will discuss what are the various terms which are used inside a COBOL module where we include files. Here you can see this is uh, this we have discussed earlier as well. In environment division under input output section we declare file control. Under file control we assign our files here. So here what we done we, what we have done what we have done here is select in file which is a file name and we have assigned it to dd input so this dd input is the dd name present in the jcl so we'll open this simultaneously here 
here you can see dd input so we have assigned this file tutorial.point.input1 to this module so we'll be using and this is the in file you can give any name this this is uh, not mandatory to give the same name you can it's a user defined name so you can mention any name but it should not be a cobol reserve word so select the file name and assign it to dd input so in the jcl here you can see this is dd input this name should match with this name and then we assign uh, we, d we decide the organization file organization indicates how the records are organized in a file there are different type of file organizations one is sequential this one is sequential which we have declared here and by default if you if you do not mention anything it will be by default sequential only then we have index sequential file and then we have relative sequential file so we'll start with sequential file in sequential file the records can be read in sequential order only suppose if you want to read a tenth record then you must read the previous nine records then records are written in a sequential order a new record cannot be inserted in between and a new record is always inserted at the end of the file after placing a record into a sequential file it is not possible to delete it delete option is valid only for index file and dynamic files then we have update we can update the records a record can be overwritten so we'll see in the next program how to update a record as well we commonly use sequential output files where we need to print it so it is good for printing now the next organization is index organization so in index sequential file consists of records that can be accessed sequentially direct access is also possible so you can do it directly you can access a record directly without reading the previous records you can directly point to a record and it is divided into two parts one is index part and one is data part in index part contains the primary key and the address in the data file now the data file contains the actual record index file and relative file um, relative file organization we will be covering under vsam so here we will be consider uh, will be focusing only on physical sequential files and what are the operations which we can perform on them now the next is sequential access after organization you can mention access as well suppose i want to mention access mode access mode is sequential so you can mention the mode also i haven't mentioned it because by default it was sequential only so for sequential access we can choose any of the files like we can if we have mentioned organization as sequential then we can use sequential we can use uh, if we have mentioned organization as index then also we can mention the mode as sequential for relative uh, organization we can also use the sequential one and then we have random access and dynamic access so as discussed random and dynamic we will be covering under uh, vsam videos here we will be focusing only on the sequential part so i'm deleting this because uh, just want to show by default it will take the sequential now we have some verbs which are used to open a file close a file here you can see open input in file in the processor division so open is the first file operation that must be performed if open is successful then only further operations are possible on a file only after opening a file the variables in the file structure are available for processing so here we can mention file status as well in the uh, next program we'll be using file status as well and what is the use of file status you can open a file in four different modes one is input like i have mentioned input next is output then we have extend and then we have input output extend in input mode if you just want to read a file then open the file in input mode if you want to insert new records then open the file in output mode extend is also used for the same purpose but there is a difference in 
extend and output mode if you are opening a file in output mode every time it will delete the previous records and it will uh, and it will uh, uh, insert the records from the starting itself but in extend mode the previous records will be written there itself and after that it will append the data similarly we have one mode input output mode input output mode is used to read and rewrite the records in a file suppose you want to update a record then you need to first read it and then you need to update it so for that we use input output mode then we have read statement read verb is used to read the file records the function of read is to fetch records from a file so this is the syntax here you can see read in file you need to mention the file name this is a optional clause into ws name if you don't mention this thing then the records will be uh, if you simply mention read in file then all the records will be put in this one fd in file so in name pick a of 80 so records will be automatically moved to this one and if you mention into this then the records will be present in this 01 name as well as in ws name so this is working storage variable this is under file section so we need to update the records in file section as well so we need to decide the structure here so here i have just mentioned one line uh, there is only one record which is of 80 bytes then if you want to read file from starting till end then you need to use perform if, si if you simply mention read this file so it will be reading only the first record but we need to put that in a perform loop so that it keeps on reading till end of file so what what we have done is here perform until ws eof is equal to y so this is i have uh, one indicator which i have declared in uh, working storage variable so this is ws end of file so what will happen when end of file is equal to y then it will come out of this loop and it will uh, close the in file so the, the, it will perform the next statement basically so here what we are doing is reading this file at end move y so once it reaches the end it will you can set any statement here and if not at end then you can mention any statement suppose you want to perform any para or if you want to just display so this is used this is a syntax read at end not at end and end read then we are uh, ending the perform as well then we are closing the in file and then stop run so what we'll do is first of all we'll check the input file what is present there and all the records will be then move to not move to it will be uh, it uh, we, we are just displaying them on uh, spool so what will in, if we summarize this program is reading an input file and it is displaying all the records present in the input file in this pool so let's see how it works so first we'll compile this module here our pro module name is p files i'm changing the module name here submit this By that time, we'll go to our JCL, which we'll be executing. So here you can see Maxis is four. This is just uh, this for warning message. So we'll ignore this and we'll submit this. Here you can see this double double slash. This is used to end the job. So till this statement, till tenth line our jcl will be executed after that it will be terminated because this i have coded for the program too so we will not be using here because we are just using input file so i have given input file as dd input and will be executing p files module so let me submit this meanwhile we'll go and check what is present what is there in input file one here you can see I have mentioned one, two, three. These are the records. This first record, second, third, fourth, fifth. So the same should be printed in the spool as well. Here you can see the records which were present in input file are displaying on in this pool 
all the 10 records. So at n, it came out of the loop. So next, we'll start with next program. In this program, I'm using two files. This is first file, input file, and then this is the second file. In previous module, what I did is I just displayed the records which are present in input file. In this program, what I will be doing is I will be reading the input file and then I will be copying them into the output file. So we'll be using two files, input file, output files. So I have declared here select in file, then we have select out file. In the file section, we'll, we'll, we'll have now two entries, one for in file, record is the same, and uh, second one is out file, same. So the only difference in this program is, op you need to open the input file in input mode, the output file in output mode, then perform until ws end of file is equal to y, so loop is same. Here we are reading input file into this ws record, then at end move same logic, note at end perform a write para. When first record will it will when it will read the first record it will come to this para note at end because it's not the end of the and then it will go to a write para. Here what we are doing is first of all we are moving this record to the out record field and then we are writing simply this. What is this first record? So I will show you. Here in FT section you have mentioned this FS out record. So you need to mention the same. First we need to move data into this in file section and simply need you need to write write the record name. So then the record will be written to this file. If you don't move anything in FS out record then the blank uh, it will have the spaces every time it will uh, print spaces in the output file. So we'll submit this. We are using the same input file. So as of now, we do not have any output file here. So once we'll submit the JCL, we'll, we'll get one output file with the, with the same records. You need to write E, not S. That was a typo. So here we are executing second. So I will mention second. And I will submit this JCL. Now we will go to JCL to execute this program. Mention 2. Here you get maxc4. So some warning messages must be there. Now in this we want to declare output file as well. So I have deleted this uh, two slashes. So now we have one output file which we have assigned to our program. Here you can see the DD input and DD output. Same we have mentioned here DD input is the input one file and then we have DD output that is the second file. We will mention two here. Now we will submit this. So first of all it will create this output two file with these parameters and then it will copy the records from input file to output file. Here you can see maxis is 0. We will go and check. Do a refresh. You got this file output to open it. So all the records which were present in input 1 are copied to output 2. Here you can mention your conditions as well. You can mention if condition suppose if you want records of a particular category we can do that as well. Now we'll record, we'll read one record and then we'll update it. Here I'm using just one file, in file, and th that is assigned to input. Now organization is sequential. Now we will use uh, this file status. You can mention here. So whenever you perform an operation on a file, the file status code will be moved to this WS status. We need to define this in the working storage. So here I have defined WS status pick of 99. So Every, when you open a file, the status should be 0. When you close a file, the status should be 0. 
zero is zero means successful if you are executing a program and you are facing some issues then you can put display this di display ws status or display the file status and you can check in which operation your program is failing here what i've done is i have uh, created a fs record in file section but i've divided those 80 bytes into three parts we have we will have first key then we will we will have filler filler is just a blank space then we have description that is of 74 characters so we are using the same input file in which in the starting we, we had some numbers so we'll see this one here the structure is like this first five are uh, key then we have one filler then we have the description so in description i've just written records first second third four Here we need to do, we need to first open the file in input output mode. So because we need to first read it and then we need to update it. So that's the reason we have used input output mode. Now the same logic read in file note at end this. So in note at end, I have asked it to go to perform rewrite para. So when it will go to rewrite para, it will check whether key is 1005 or not. WS key because you see here read input file into WS record so we are moving the data into WS record WS record is having the same structure here you can see WS key filler and description the file section and working storage section should be same so that you can map it so here we are moving the records of in file to working storage and automatically they comes to this FS record as well so in write para, it is checking the condition. If key is 1005, then display the record and display the WS status. Status like what's the file status, the last file status. So the last time we performed a read operation. So we need to check this. Now, what we are displaying here is we are updating this record. So here we are updating this record and we are moving it to FS description. So what it will do is for record 10005, it will update the description to this. We are updating this record and then we are doing sim like how we did for write. We need to just type rewrite and the record section, the record which we have declared in file section, then end re rewrite and end if. Just see the module again. Now we'll execute this, the same process, compile this. Change the name here. Submit. We'll open the JCL to execute this. I've created one J file. So it is same only just I've changed the name here p53 so we'll here we got max ac4 now we'll execute this one enter max ac0 first we'll check the spool and then we'll check the file So here it is showing this is the fifth record and this is zero zero it means file status was zero it was successful now we'll check the file the fifth record must have been updated here you can see we are updating this record so we are moving this thing we have moved this to one zero zero five so we have updated this record successfully so this is all about file handling in the next video, we'll start with subroutines where we'll call one program from another program.